You're watching Wayback Machine 1, Classic TV. Please subscribe today. Looking for Lucy, Groucho, Martin and Lewis, Classic Sci-Fi? We have them all here on Classic TV. Wayback Machine 1, subscribe today. You're watching Wayback Machine 1. The engine running and cover me. Okay. Don't let anything go wrong. I don't want to get that pretty face of yours hurt, see? It's pure. I told you it wasn't cut. Well, let's not stand around all day, huh? Charlie Lucky agreed, 80 grand. Ain't you gonna count it? I trust Charlie Lucky. Uh, Juggy, just a minute. I don't trust you. Stick around. Hurry up, Sam. Pretty face. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Back in the 1920s, a lot of little wheels in the crime business tried to make a fast pile for themselves by double crossing the big wheels. Olaf Jurgensen was one of them. And as with the others who tried it, his biggest problem was getting away with it. And for Jurgi here, the problem turned out to involve his longtime girlfriend, Mildred Grayson, who had a slant of her own on the subject of opportunity. As Mildred. A slant I knew she'd adopted some years before to escape from the poverty of the Lower East Side. A lot of people wonder if a policeman has any human feelings at all. The answer is he's just as human as anybody else. But he has to keep his feelings covered up, especially when he's on the job and to do his job right. And especially when a case strikes him pretty close to home. My name is Barney Ruditsky, 20 years gangster squad, police department, city of New York. Pretty Eddie Mascio. But he certainly ruined that nickname for him. Yeah. He's just a punk, though. Who'd bother to rub him out? Yeah, who'd bother to rub Crawford out over down the alley? You gonna make on the car? Yeah. Reported stolen 8 p.m. last night. Figures. You know, uh, Mascio was one of Jerky's boys. And Jerky knows we know it. That means he's gonna be making himself awful hard to find. I don't know. I, I know his girlfriend, Mildred uh, Grayson. So do I. I knew her when her name was Mildred Gross. Barney! Oh, Molly. It's been a long time. Yes, yes, it has. 
Come on in. Thank you. Oh, this is a surprise. But I don't guess he came here to talk about old times. No. I want Jergy. Oh, you've come to the wrong place, Barney. I haven't seen him for two or three weeks. We broke up. Why? What's he done? Fronda has got himself killed. Pretty Eddie Machio. Eddie? Mm-hmm. Surprised? I guess not. He was in a lousy business. Who did it? That's what I was going to ask you. Jergy never discussed his deals with me when we were together. He sure wouldn't after we broke up. Why don't he walk out? He didn't. He got thrown out. I know, according to the book, I ought to be dead. But if I was, maybe he'd have to stop thinking I'll change my mind and go back to him. And he doesn't want to stop thinking that. Crazy? Hmm. Maybe it's just his own peculiar way of carrying a torch. Hmm. Barney, I was just having my coffee when you got here. You got time for a cup? Well, oh, come I... on. I wish you would. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of this joint, Barney. I'm going to get a job. It's a laugh, isn't it? Sit down. Thank you. You're going to work. That's like moving backwards, isn't it? I was awful young once. I've learned since then. You can be poor in a lot of different ways. You want sugar? No, thank you. I've learned to do without it. Seen your father lately? No. He wouldn't even let me come home when Ma died. He won't come here. He says he says he'll die before he sets foot inside my house. I've learned to take it black too, Barney. I wish. I wish we could go back to those days. I wish things could have been different. You can wish your life away. I've missed you, Barney. You have a long memory. That's below the belt. I guess I deserve it. Sorry. I had a rough morning. Good coffee. You always make good coffee. Have you any idea where Jerry might be hanging out? I don't know. Thanks. How did Eddie get it? The side of the head. Somebody put one into his back, too. Different bullets, though. What does that mean? When he got hit, whoever was on the job with him finished it off. Why would anyone on a job with him do that? Would Jaggy leave a wounded man to talk? No. Bonnie, I'd like to help you try to find him. Why? I told you I want to go straight. Maybe that's one way of proving I mean it. Maybe I feel sorry for Eddie. Only one thing, Barney. Don't put a tail on me. Why? Where are you planning to go? Well, first I want to try to square myself with my old man. Then I'll find Jerry for you to prove him on the level. And if you're on the level, maybe I can help you find a job. Thanks for the coffee. Bonnie, hmm? could I see you once in a while? Oh, I don't mean like old times. Just maybe talk. You know where to find me. I'll see myself. Says she broke with Jerky. She hasn't seen him, but she'll help us find him. Says she wants to go straight. Millie? Oh, come on now, Max. It's possible. You have to give people the benefit of the doubt. Look, uh, 
Stake out the place, will you? Put a tail on her. I want to do some looking on my own. I gotta see him right away. I'll leave a message. Got a piece of paper? Nerdisky. Oh, Barney, this is Max. I trailed Millie to 247 Canal Street. She went inside for about 15 minutes, and then she came out and went straight home. Uh huh. Well, so far that's legitimate, right down the line. That Canal Street address is a romance place. She uh, just called me. I'm on my way to see her. You want me to meet you there? No. But I'll get in touch with you later. Any sign of Jerky? No, but I'll keep trying. So will I. You better catch up to him before Charlie Lucky does. Barney, uh, Barney, I'll find Jerky, but look, I don't blame you for being leery about trusting me the way I turned out to be. But where I've got to go to put a finger on Jerky, you could get me killed keeping a tail on me. Huh? I spotted him right off, and if he got spotted where I'm going, I could wind up in the river fast. Bonnie, I'm risking my neck, either way, to prove to both of us, you and myself, that I'm on the level about making the big right turn, so give me all the break you can. Call off your boy. Hmm? Okay. What are you doing here? I wanted to help. Sam sent me. Sam? Yeah, he's scared. The cops got half the town looking for you. Charlie Lucky's got the other half. Sam thinks the best bet is to let me move the stuff to someplace safe. How come you're doing me favors? Why do you think how come? You think I stopped feeling like I do just because you walked out? You heard they got Eddie, huh? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I figured you'd feel worse the way he was panting after that punk. Is that why you killed him? You're lucky it wasn't you I shot. There was nothing between Eddie and me, you know that. There's never been anyone but you, Jerky. That's the honest truth. How come you got so palsy with Sam? Because I told you he came to see me because he was scared. It wasn't because you found out I had three kilos of H, huh? And 80 grand. Well, don't worry about the 80 grand because it's hit and you're not going to get your Jerky. hands on it. All I want is a share of you. That's all I want. What's Sam's plan? Well, Sam's hot and you're on fire. Nobody's interested in me because they know you walked out. So I move the stuff to the place in New Jersey, Sam sets up the contacts without coming near you, and I'll be the go-between. I want to spend as much time as I can with you, Jerky. You don't know how lonely it gets. You're tough, you know that. Real tough. Yeah. Let me, uh, 
move the stuff to Jersey and get everything safe. Then I'll come back. Uh, it'll take me maybe a couple of hours. Okay? Okay. Pretty smart, huh? You always were. Take it out under your coat. Don't go out carrying nothing. Mm. Want a match? Yeah. Oh, don't bother. I've got it right here. The janitor knows nothing from nothing. The only way he found out about it, some drunk stumbled in the room by mistake and put in a complaint. No powder burns in the body, but from the position, I'd say that whoever shot him must have been in the room and close. All right. Thanks, Doc. The sense you wouldn't let Charlie Lucky get that close. Hmm? Figure this is where he had the stuff in, huh? Yeah, good be. It's not there now. Huh? Whoever knocked him off knew he had the stuff and got it. Who else was he working with besides Eddie? I don't know. Maybe Mully can tell us. Stay with her, Lieutenant. Stake out on her. For all good, I should have kept it. Charlie Lucky. I must have met. In spite of the way Jerry was shot up close, you know. Shot Jerry and he got Millie. Well, I don't know. If he was gonna knock her off, why wouldn't he do it right here? What'd he be holding her for? I don't know. I don't know, unless maybe he didn't find the stuff with Jerry and maybe he didn't find Millie either. Maybe she got away. If she did this. One place she might have gone. Let's try a long shot. Hello, Mr. Gruff. It's Barney. Barney? Barney Redditsky. Ah, oh, Barney! <laughs> no, don't stand in the hall. Come on in. <laughs> Barney Roditsky. A real pleasure. You look just the same. Life's been good to you, huh, Barney? Very good. How's it with you? Yeah. Look at me. At such a time, I'm eating my breakfast. <laughs> Dwight Knight's at my age, it's no pleasure. Sit down, Barney, huh? Thank you. Uh, you take something? I got bread, herring, uh, schnapps. Huh? Uh, schnapps. I forget you're a policeman, huh? <laughs> oh, Mr. Gross, I'll have to get the vice squad on you. <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm looking for Mildred. Mildred? At last the Lord's catching up with her, huh? I told her, Barney. You lay down in the dirt, don't expect to get up clean. No, no, Mr. Gross, come on. I know she made a few mistakes, but she's trying to go straight now. Barney, after all you've been through, after all she did? I don't want to alarm you, Mr. Gross, but I've been looking for Mildred and I can't find her. I thought maybe she came here. She'd come back in my house. After five years, she'd come back here. She wasn't here this morning? When she left my house, she made her choice. Back she won't come. Ah. Oh. I, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mills. I, I gotta run. I'll see you again, huh? Take care of yourself. Yeah.
I don't know why she came here this morning, but it wasn't to see her old man. You sure you were waiting out here all the time? Sure, I, I was right over there on the corner. She knew you were tailing her. You know that, don't you? Well, the reason she came here probably was to make us think it was to see her father. She stood inside the doorway there just for 15 minutes just to make it look good. Unless maybe she knew somebody else in the building, you know, wanted to see him and... Wait a minute. You know those joints out back there across the alley? Bobby Stillman's. It's a hangout for the Charlie Lucky gang. Yeah. Let's go. I think we can make it through the back door. Mildred Grayson? No. Never heard no one with that name. On the house. I'll give you two seconds to refresh your memory or I'll close up this rat trap tighter than a clam. <sighs> what are you talking, Mr. Raditsky? You're not vice squad. I'm a cop, and I promise you I'll bury you so deep under that jail they'll have to mind to get you out. Now talk! Okay, she, she came in this afternoon looking for Sam. Sam the junkie? Yeah, she left a message, and she come back and talk to him later. All right. You can keep your roof drink. Let's pick up Sam the Junkie. The junk is missing and so is Miller. You're still in circulation. That means she must have it. Now, come on. Where is she, Sam? I told you, I don't know anything. All right. Now, book you on the Harris and that narcotics. Whoa, what are you talking about? I don't have anything. I'm clean. That's what I mean. You see, Sam, if I book you, I can hold you for 48 hours. Now, how do you think you're going to feel in a couple of hours from now? Oh, you're going to be dancing. You're going to be dancing all over the ceiling. Okay. Where's the junk, Millie? I got it all right, Barney. I told I told you I'd find him for you. You didn't tell me you were going to kill him. I wasn't going to, Barney. But he grabbed me, and he tried to make love to me. I don't know how I let him so much as ever touch me before. I couldn't stand it, Barney. But I knew I didn't stand a chance unless I... You know what flashed through my mind? You and me standing on the bridge that night, a long time ago, remember? The first night you kissed me. I thought about how wonderful it was and about how clean I was then. And then I felt him pulling at me and crushing me to him. And all of a sudden, I had a crazy strength enough to break away. I grabbed the gun and I shot him. I had to, Barney. I had to. And I fell for your act. Me, a cop. It wasn't an act, and it wasn't an act way back then, the way I felt about you, I mean. No? How did you get along with your father this morning? Oh, everything worked out all right. Hmm. Oh, all right, I went there to, to throw the guy off my tail. But I might have known you'd check with my old man. And you might have known that I know Bobby Stillman's joint was out back across the alley. All right, come on, the stuff, where is it? Before I tell you, listen to why I took it, Barney, and believe me. I know, you were going to sell it for enough money so we could get a new life together someplace, huh? Oh, sure, I thought of that, but I threw it out. I knew what you'd say to it, even forgetting I was part of the deal. Thanks. I took the stuff for me, Barney. My only chance for a fresh start was to, cl to clear out of the country. The stuff was going to buy it for me. Sorry. The stuff, Millie. Where? Hmm. In the top drawer. Oh, well, let me get a match. Oh, never mind. I got one here. It was just too bad you couldn't have hooked up with some nice young guy a long time ago. You can always say you offered me that chance. Some consolation.
I'm Lieutenant Colombo. Just one more thing. Subscribe now for classic TV shows right here on Wayback Machine 1. Thank you very much.